Hey, Greg, how you doing? I thought I was done. You guys had any questions? No one got <laughs> not, on the mic. Not so fast. Not so fast. Um, well, basically, starting out, just maybe you could describe to us what exactly you know your role entails as the passing game specialist. Sure. Um, I'm heavily involved with the quarterbacks. Uh, from my experiences that I've been fortunate enough to be a part of, uh, I've worked with quite a few variety of quarterbacks. And so when we were formulating the staff here, uh, that's what Coach Sala wanted me to do. And Coach LaFleur was, you know, be the voice more or less in the quarterback room, uh, along with Rob Calabrese's assistants uh, to, to pass on the information of what Mike wants to do offensively speaking. So primarily with the quarterbacks and then I'll assist Mike with game planning and uh, game day management stuff. What um what has stood out to you about Zach during the last uh, what, six weeks or whatever it is that you guys have been working with him? Uh, fast study. Uh, he's done a good job of minimizing mistakes. Uh, you got to expect mistakes from anyone that's starting first time in any profession for that matter. And I'm seeing very minimal same mistake twice. So he learns quickly from his mistakes, and that's impressive to see from a young guy. Uh, he's a big time student of the game. I think all three guys have done, I'll put a lot of work in outside of our meetings to get ready for this new offense coming at him. Uh, but the first thing that comes to mind is he's a quick study and he learns from his mistakes. With, um, with James Morgan, Carrie, he had a lot of rookies had a unique experience last year without, oh. pre, you know, no offseason, no preseason games. Is he basically a rookie right now or is he, I mean, how would you characterize yeah. him? Because he missed, he missed that whole time last year. Great question, Brian. I'd say tr it's true for all rookie quarterbacks that were rookies last year. They're still a rookie because uh, not only were there no preseason reps for them and for that matter, obviously in season for the most part, for most rookies, but you just didn't get enough reps because, you know, as coaches, you didn't have any OTA reps to work with your guys. So now you got to get your team ready for the season. So uh, he didn't get many during training camp. I went, that was one of the first things we did when we got in the building was we went back and watched all the, all the training camp reps. And uh, as you would expect from a rookie quarterback, he just didn't get a whole lot of reps. So yeah, it's, it's essentially his first year, like it is for most rookies uh, as a quarterback, uh, learning their offenses this year. Greg, when you, when you first kind of started coaching, it was, more accustomed that when you drafted a rookie quarterback, that rookie quarterback sat. And, and now obviously we're starting to see more and more rookie quarterbacks getting the start week one in Zach's case, he's getting the vast majority of the first team reps. It's not all the first team reps dating back to OTA. So how have you kind of seen that transition change throughout your coaching career? Yeah, that's something we've talked in our profession quite a bit. When we get together at the combine, the coaches do quarterback coaches do and offense coordinators, uh, Next to the schemes of defense in my 25 years of coaching the NFL and getting a lot more exotic, that's been the next biggest change I've seen is that these quarterbacks are, first of all, they're throwing the ball at a lot younger age than when I first got in the league. So for a lot of high school offenses, they're spreading it out. College offenses certainly spreading it out. And so uh, they're getting a lot of mental reps and physical reps of studying defenses and throwing the ball. So now when they become rookies in NFL, they've actually got a lot more experience than when you drafted a guy 25 years ago out of college who was probably in an offense that was maybe 50-50 or almost 60-40 run to pass ratio. So they didn't get as many throwing attempts. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be around a wise man, Bill Walsh, when I first got into coaching at San Francisco. And it's something he taught me was you can't replace game reps. And so he said, if the guy even played in arena football or Canadian league football game reps, you can't replicate. And so when you're looking for a free agent, if there's someone in those other capacities or a spring league, there's a lot of value to that. And so that's why I think young guys are starting earlier because they do have a lot more experience before they even get to the NFL throwing the ball. Hey, Greg, oh, Greg it's Kim Jones from NFL network um, to, to kind of bounce off that. So what's it like to have a room of really young quarterbacks and is teaching really at a premium? Both my parents are teachers. It is really cool because the, their knowledge, is, like here's the canvas, all right? Start teaching them what you know without over teaching them too quickly. So that part's the challenge, but it's really exciting because it's, I've had both extremes. I mean, I've had the veteran guy in 
Matt Ryan, Matt Schaub, Peyton Manning, Steve Young, and I've had some young guys. And so it's what's really cool for me is I and as I gotten older, I've learned, OK, here's what I have seen. I call I call it my version of football 101 before Robert was presented to the team. And so here's from my experiences. I'm willing to tell you this because I, I got enough trial and error on it and they're 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 getting it. They're learning it. But at the same time, in my experience, I've said, all right, now tell me what you know, because they might have been taught something else because of all this throwing going on in, in the college level that I haven't learned that I said, OK, that's similar to what I believe in this part, whether it's reading a defense or an offensive uh, pass read. And so it's pretty exciting. It, it's, it's invigorating for me. I'll be honest with you. I, I enjoy it a lot. Greg, um, obviously you came into the league in the 90s um, with the San Francisco 49ers. And they were running a West Coast type of offense, and now the Jets are running a different version of the West Coast offense. How much has it evolved from when you came into the league to where it is now? Yeah, I've been pretty fortunate. So I got exposed to this style of offense when I went to Houston with Gary Kubiak. It was right after Kyle had been there. And to me, the biggest change of that original West Coast offense in this is the play pass and the zone running game being so tightly mashed, meshed together. Um, that has really, in my opinion, taken the West Coast offense to get a more explosive game within the offense. Uh, back in the original West Coast, it was gap run scheme was not always relating to the play pass scheme. And it was a lot more drop back on first and second down. Now there's a lot more of those big passing chunks off the hard play pass that complement the run so well. That's what made this offense uh, to me more explosive than the original West Coast. Greg, you've been a lot, around a lot of quarterbacks in, in your time in the league. Does Zach remind you of anyone of those? Uh, let me go through some games. I got to go through some games and see how he handles it and reacts to the highs and lows and uh, the vision that he has. Um, uh, no one comes to mind just yet, but uh, I, I usually like to go through some games to have a better understanding of if there's a correlation to somebody I've, I've worked with before. Greg, you were talking about the game reps you know, that Bill Walsh told you about, you have a room with zero regular season game reps in it right now. And you did your math Mike, pretty quick, Brian. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Mike White is probably, is the only one who's ever played in a preseason game. Right. Um, so, exactly. I mean, what, like, you know, what's the challenge of that? We've seen a lot in this league where a rookie quarterback gets paired with a, a you know, the veteran mentor quarterback and stuff. What are the challenges right now of having a room with that little experience? Yeah, to me, it's, 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 there's a, the process of teaching the offense first, right? Learn your side of the ball has been a big point of emphasis from the first phase one to this point now. And during the last couple of weeks, I think it's part of my responsibility and it's certainly being training camp. Let's start looking at the other side of the ball. Now that you know our offense, let's start learning about the different looks you're about to see. And uh, with what Coach Shala and Coach Olberg are putting together on defense, we're going to get a pretty good variety of seeing some different blitzes and some different coverages because that's the hardest thing to replicate because we're only going to see so much of a certain style of defense. But as much as I can teach these guys in video of, all right, we're going to see this blitz package and here's your indicators of blitzes coming or here's a certain coverage coming, that's my biggest challenge is to try to get them mentally prepared of what they're going to see in, in games now on the defensive side of the ball since they have a better understanding of our offense. Hey, Greg, you mentioned uh, that your impression of Zach is that he's a fast study, how quickly he's picked things up. What are the physical things that have sold you on him, uh, you know, that he does well, maybe better than some of the quarterbacks uh, you know of? Yeah, it's been well documented uh, that the off-platform throws is something you really you can't coach. So um, – I'm a big believer in lower half of your body dictates your accuracy for most quarterbacks in the NFL. If your feet are in the right place and you, if you, if you rotated your hips right and you can deliver the throw with your feet in the proper direction, you're going to be a pretty accurate quarterback. He is like a few that have played this game that don't need that necessarily. He has a very natural arm talent that can change slot directions to improve his accuracy. And uh, I've tried at some point in my career to change out with some young quarterbacks. And it's really hard to do at this level. By the time I get my hands on them, they've already created that habit of throwing motion and of whichever quarterbacks you want to talk about. He has a natural throwing motion that he can change the slot arm slot to improve his accuracy, even if his feet aren't ready. And that, that really stands out to me. What I saw in college was he doesn't necessarily need to have that clean pocket. He doesn't have to have his feet set the right way. 
he can adjust to throw during the throwing motion pretty quickly. We'll take a couple more for Coach Knapp. Hey, Greg, it's Kim Jones again. Um, before they drafted Zach, and probably long before they noticed this, I, I know the Jets hierarchy loved the idea he's a former point guard and talked literally about his ball handling um, at that level. And, and then, of course, football, that's a, that's a different kind of ball handling. Do you see that as helping him now that, that he has that in his background, the, the point guard in him? Yeah, the vision of his play shows that from his basketball days of seeing the whole court slash field. Uh, what's even been more impressive to me is, is how quick his feet do move within the pocket or to escape pressure. And that to me shows from his basketball skills how much he, he's got the ability to avoid a rush when needed and, and, and extend a play. Uh, it's pretty impressive. And no doubt the basketball background has helped in both those areas, vision as well as uh, uh, being elusive. Everybody good? Thank you, everyone. Thank